Welcome to Northbourne Baptist Home Church. It's great to have you with us today. Uh, let us come before the Lord and hear his words from Isaiah 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to your people and proclaim to her that a hard service has been completed, that a sin has been paid for. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Let us pray. Father God, as we gather this morning, uh, we gather in our homes, around our lounges, in the, uh, around our computer screens. We do so even though we are separate, we are one in Jesus Christ. We come before you as the giver of life and the words of life. And Lord, we seek your presence and power among us, your comfort and your strength. Lord, come among your people this morning. Speak mightily to us. May we have ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to North Bowen Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here. We are a vibrant, cross-cultural, family-friendly church, and we love it. We believe that the Bible is not just a history book, but it teaches us how to live, even today. Whether seven or seventy, single or from a three-generational family, like ours, God's love is what unites us. So come join us every Sunday. And while you're here, we hope you'll connect with God and each other. Join a growth group, build friendships, and your faith. We're here to grow individually in our relationship with God, but also together as a community, as one family under God. So once again, welcome to the church family here at North Bourne Baptist. And here are the notices for this week. Welcome to Church at Home. Here are the notices for this week. We'd love you to stay connected by either church website, using the church app, email, or call and make an appointment at the office. We're also continuing with our growth groups on Zoom and we have a new study and we've chosen 10 passages of the Bible that we believe really relate well to this current environment. So if you haven't been part of a growth group before, uh, we'd love you to sign up for a Zoom group. They meet on various days at various times during the day so make sure you get it, have an opportunity to join in with the study for such a time as this. We'd like to thank everyone for your commitment to the Lord and your church in tithes and offerings. There are three different ways you can continue to give. Direct bank transfer using the church app or drop off can be arranged at the church office. Also, don't forget we have our helpline. Please feel free to call the office if you need any groceries, if you have any questions, if you need any help around the house, or if you just need somebody to talk to. Please ring the office and we'd love to chat with you and help out in any way we can. Everyone, it's Joshua here. Um, I came back to Melbourne at the end of the school holidays for Term 1, um, and since then we've been in lockdown, um, and the Term 2... Um, has gone um, online, so I've been working from home here. I've been in Melbourne um, working from home here, um, which I'm really grateful for because at least that way I'm able to be able with family while we're stuck at home. Um, today I'm going to be doing the family prayer for us, so let's bow our heads and pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all the families um, within our church. Thank you for um, each and every one of them um, that you know by name and you know all the hairs on their heads. Lord, thank you that you are um, with them in this time, in this time where we are all stuck in isolation and at home. Lord, I pray that you continue to give um, the families patience um, as they are um, learning to work things out and um, especially with going back to school and school being online now, Lord, I pray that you give them patience with how they're um, adjusting to the new normal. Um, I pray that you give um, the teachers who are um, giving uh, and trying to sort out these online lessons as well, patience um, and guidance and wisdom. Lord, I pray for the parents um, that you um, grant them yeah, wisdom and um, love in the way that they um, interact with, with their children throughout the days and um, through the entire week in which they have um, a lot of contact. And Lord, I just pray that you be um, especially um, pouring out your love to the little ones, that you will be continuing to um, draw them close to you, Lord, um, and allow them to, in this time, um, grow closer to their parents and to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, redemption's hill where your blood was spilled. Good morning to you all. Readings from the Holy Gospel, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 13. Final extortions. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, by petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Thanks for their gifts. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secrets of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. This is the word of God. Amen. The coronavirus pandemic is a very serious situation. But wherever there's seriousness, there's always a little bit of humour. So on your screens, you'll see some of the comics that have been created, which really make us laugh. Like this one that says, one day... COVID-19 showed up, most just ignored it, and suddenly everyone ran out of toilet paper and the world was cancelled. Here's another one. Good news. 
you don't have coronavirus. And the poor father, but can you still quarantine me for my kids? And then finally, the shopping dilemma. I thought the coronavirus had led to the cancellation of sport. Hey, I'm off to the supermarket to buy toilet paper. But of course, the, the, the pandemic is a, a very serious situation and is causing a lot of anxiety in our community today. In fact, before the coronavirus hit Australia, in the previous year, one in eight Australians had anxiety-related uh, conditions. And this has obviously been accentuated by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. We have social isolation, we have financial crisis, there are people who are jobless, and there's been already an escalation in violence, domestic violence, divorce. There's definitely IT stress, trying to get our devices to work, and social media overload. And it's something all of us have to deal with to some extent, and we've had to deal with it in the past few months. But the thing about anxiety is, anxiety lies. And we, this is especially so as Christian people. And this passage that Paul wrote to the, Philipp, uh, the Philippian church is a fantastic passage on how to cope and deal with anxiety and to expose the lies that anxiety t tell us and create in us the stress and worry and concerns. So the first anxiety lie that Paul addresses in Philippians chapter 4, we see it in verse 4. And the first anxiety lie is you are on your own. It's all up to you. Nobody is going to help you and you are in a crisis all by yourself. And Paul wrote to the Philippian church and he said something very different. He said in verse 5, the Lord is near. And in verse 4, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Now, we know as Christian people that, that God is near to those who love him and those who seek him. In Matthew 28, verse 20, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, this is a theological fact. It is a truth that those who belong to Jesus Christ, uh, the presence of God is near. The presence of God is within us. I remember as a, a young boy, I was very shy. And whenever we went out, uh, I always made sure I s stood near Dad. If I was near Dad, I was relaxed, I, I could play, I, I was at peace. But if I couldn't find Dad, I was under stress and anxiety and fear. Paul says to us, rejoice in the Lord always. Remember, the Lord is near. And you know, you and I, we can wake up every day in the same world as the risen Jesus Christ. He is alive and powerfully at work in us. Easter Sunday that we celebrated only a week or so ago, Easter Sunday is not one day for the year. Easter Sunday can be enjoyed and celebrated every day. We celebrate and enjoy life with the risen Lord who is near to us. Every day is a day to celebrate the presence of God. So when anxiety comes into our lives, things like stresses and fears and worries, don't let them stifle your enjoyment and, and praise of Jesus. We can rejoice in the Lord always, in every circumstance, in every situation, on every day. Yes, there are things that cause us concerns and worries. We all have them. But we also have the presence of Jesus Christ near us and we can celebrate and rejoice in him every single day, regardless of what's happening around us. So anxiety lies. And once again, we see this in this passage. Once again, anxiety says to us, you're on your own. It's all up to you. Nobody's going to help. But Paul declares to us that God is the sovereign Lord, that he's compassionate and full of love, and he longs for us to seek him. He says in verse 6, he says, 
do not be anxious about anything, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving present your requests to God. In other words, don't be, you don't have to be careful about anything because we can come to the Lord in fear. We have no, uh, in, in uh, peace. We have nothing to fear. You know, learning this fact is a lifetime journey. In verse 19, Paul went on and said, and my God will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. We can present our concerns and worries and our requests to God and we have an open door to the Father in heaven. In any and every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. The Bible teaches us that through the blood of Jesus and through his forgiveness, we have complete access to the Father and we, can, we have uh, uh, our Lord in heaven who draws near to us and who hears our prayers and responds. And Paul reminds us that we are to, to present our requests with thanksgiving. That's the faith part, that we thank God for what we already have. We thank God for the way that he's going to provide in the future. Uh, with, and we're not to lose perspective. Anxieties and worries and stresses can really burden our life, but we must remember to keep it all in perspective with the good things that God has uh, given us around us. So by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. It's like if you were the son of Bill Gates and presenting your financial problems to your dad. Uh, the riches of God are at our at his disposal in caring for you and I as people of faith. So remember again, anxiety lies to us. It tells us something that's not true. It takes the problems that we are involved in and blows them out of proportion and destroys everything else that's good in our life. It says all is doom and gloom. One bad problem ruins everything and there is nothing you can do about it. You're stuck. But Paul taught the people at Philippi, that God's goodness can be found all around us, can be found everywhere. You know, sometimes we allow the negatives and the stresses and the problems to blow out of proportion and to rob our joy in the Lord. Have you ever done that before? You're worried, sick about something, you can't sleep, and then eventually the next day it all blows over and you think, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? And Paul says that we are to be proactive in the way that we think. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, our brains have thinking habits. And anxiety is often produced when our habit is to dwell on the negative things of life. It's to dwell on what we don't have. It's to dwell on what isn't. It dwells on what's missing. It dwells on what could have happened. It dwells on what could happen in the future and what did happen in the past. And Paul explains that we need to discipline our minds to seek out the good things of God that are all around us. The beauty of creation, the sunrise and the sunset, a beautiful garden, the laughter of a small child, the taste of Vegemite or perhaps cheesecake or a juicy apple, whatever suits your taste buds. Uh, but we are to look around us and enjoy the, the beautiful creation God has given us and look for the good things in life and train our mind to block out the negative things and to look at the good things that God has given to us. And he says also that we're looked at, we are to look at the goodness in other people. In verse 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Have a look around you at some of the people that God has put in your life and the good things in the people around you. That comes from God. That's God's gift to you. And there's so much we can learn from each other, not just, uh, just the way we think, but in acting rightly in our lives and, and practicing uh, what we see in others. You know, there's always somebody in a crisis who, while everyone else is running around like a chook with their head cut off, there's always somebody who remains calm 
and goes about their actions. And I encourage you to look around you, to the fellow Christians around you who display the wisdom and peace of Jesus in a crisis. And when things are going wrong, they're the people that really stand out. And I, I encourage you to find these people and learn from them and, and put into practice in your life the same habits that they have. Once again, anxiety lies. Anxiety tells us you're on your own, it's all up to you, nobody's going to help you. But uh, we are taught in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is alive and powerful in you. You are not alone. You know, Paul's life was, was full of ups and downs. He says in the passage, he says, I know what it's like to be in plenty and I know what it's like to be in want. And that's a pretty big understatement uh, from Paul to, to, to talk about that because some of the experiences he went through were quite catastrophic. He says he's been in prison more frequently, flogged more severely, exposed to death again and again. Five times he received from the Jews 40 lashes, three times beaten with rods, once pelted with a stone, three times shipwrecked, spent a night and day in the open sea. He, and, and he goes on and on and, and, and explains all of the, the hardships he's been through. And yet in the midst of it all, he says, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. And I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. I've learned the secret. Um, and he says, uh, I've learned to be content in whatever the circumstances because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. He's talking about the fact that circumstances change all the time. One day can be fair weather and another day can be a storm. And the strength that he has is nothing to do with the circumstances and everything to do with the presence and power of Jesus. And the strength that he has and the peace that he has is independent of external circumstances. We're experiencing at the moment the COVID-19 pandemic and this is not the first time in world history that the world has been uh, under the, the pressure of disease. There was a, a pastor in Germany in the early 17th century. His name was Martin Rinkart. And he pastored a church in a, a, small, a smallish walled town called Ellenburg. And, and this was in the middle of a war. And Ellenburg became a haven for refugees. Except in 1637, a virus, not unlike ours, hit the town. And in the course of one year, he had to lead 4,480 funerals. The supervising pastor of the town uh, fled the carnage, leaving him in charge. The only two other pastors in the town died, as his, did his wife. But he was able to lead the town through its darkest hours. And even when the virus passed, the politicians and town leaders all came back to the town and harassed him out of his role. But during this time, he wrote this hymn, and it's called, Now Thank We All Our God. And it goes like this, and I'm not going to sing it, it's okay. He goes, Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things have done in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. That was his testimony in the midst of the absolute worst carnage you could ever imagine. But he'd learned like Paul, even faced with the worst situation of all, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing that me and Jesus can't handle. So Paul is teaching us that anxiety is a lie and, and that there are some undergirding truths as Christian people that transform our minds and our thinking and our sense of peace. The first one, of course, was the Lord is near. Rejoice in him always. The Lord isn't distant. He isn't far away. He's right near. And we can celebrate and rejoice in him every day, regardless of what's happening. The second one was that he is sovereign and loving God. And we can pray on all occasions and bring our needs to him in prayer and present our request to God. 
He's our loving Father and he, he will uh, bless us and strengthen us in the power of his Holy Spirit. The third one is that God's goodness is all around us. Whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is praiseworthy, think on these things. Look around you. Look around to the people uh, that are showing the grace and love of God and learn from them and put it into practice. And finally, he said, God is alive and powerful in you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That would be a great motto to wake up in the morning, wouldn't it? Today, Lord, I don't know what else is going to happen, but I can do all things through you who strengthens me. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you to celebrate and rejoice in the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus, our Saviour and our Lord. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit because you are near. Thank you that you are close to us through faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you that we are united together in the power of your presence and love. Lord, sometimes life does get heavy upon us. We do experience the anxieties and worries and concerns of this world. And I pray that you would help us to expose the lies of anxiety and to replace them with the truth of who you are and what you've done for us and the power of your presence within us and around us. Lord God, together with thanksgiving, we present our request to you. We pray, Lord, that your comfort will cover this world in this time of pandemic. We know that you are near, even though disaster is among us, you are near. You're the light that shines in darkness. Lord, we pray for an end to this disease. We pray for healing for those who are already sick. And we pray for hope for this world. And Lord, we pray your peace, your love and your hope be upon us all. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen.